Hey there, fellow maker. Welcome down to my shop. I'm Bill, and today I'm going to be showing you how to take high quality reference photos of your head and your body to help you on your next prop or costume project. Getting top notch body references of yourself can help you with your prop and costume making, especially when it comes to designing all of those pieces and scaling them appropriately in an efficient manner. I took some reference photos of myself a few years ago and they've been super helpful for all of my projects since then. And I figured that it was time I updated those photos. So I'll show you guys how I do it. Just about any camera will do. You could just use your phone. If that's all you've got, it'll work just fine. But if you have a camera with an optical zoom, that's even better. Not a digital zoom, mind you, optical like this. Ready? Optical. To eliminate as much focal distortion as possible, you want to zoom in as far as you can. If you have a 200 millimeter lens, that's awesome. Um, 100 millimeters, still pretty good. My little camera right here that I'm filming with can zoom into an equivalent of, I think, 70 millimeters. Not perfect, but again, it's a lot better than having a super wide lens like your phone usually has. Here you can see a headshot at 18 millimeters and another one at 200 millimeters. That wider 18 millimeter shot distorts the size of my nose compared to my ears, which are further away from the camera. So that 200 millimeter shot is much preferred. For shooting your photos, you're gonna need a friend to help you out, or if you have a tripod for your camera, then you can set it all up and use the self timer on your camera. Of course, this will take a little bit of trial and error to make sure that you're framed correctly and in focus, but if that's all you've got, it will definitely work. You're also gonna need a ruler to hold in frame while you're taking your photos. Pose with your head relaxed, staring straight ahead with no expression. Hold that ruler near your head as nearly vertical as you can manage and about lined up with your ear. Then have your friend snap a photo and that's it. That's as easy as it gets. Of course, you'll want to do the same thing for the side view of your head, this time holding the ruler parallel to your nose. Of course, try to keep the same expression that you had on the front view and don't tip your chin up or down. While you're at it, you should grab a three quarters view of your head. This is just rotating your head 45 degrees off from the front view. Of course, you can do the same thing for your full body shot. Again, zoom in as much as you can with that optical zoom, hold the ruler in frame, assume a neutral pose and then snap away. Once you've taken all of your photos, you can throw them into your image editing software of choice. I like Photoshop, but if you want a free alternative, GIMP will work as well. Pick your main view. In this case, I used the front view of my head and then make the canvas large enough to accommodate the two other views that you took on either side of that front view. If your front view is tilted a little bit to the left or right, you can rotate it until it's perfectly straight up and down. You can drag all of your images into one document in different layers, and then drag down some horizontal guys to line up the top of your head, the bottom of your chin, and the pupils in your eyes. Now take each of your other views and do a free transform. This will allow you to scale and move them until all the features on that side match up with the features on the front of your face. You'll also want to make sure that the ruler is included in at least the front view of this image. This will help you with scaling stuff later on. And of course, you can do all of the same things with your full body image. I find that I mostly use the front view of my body, so I'll usually just make sure that's nice and square and call it good. Once you're all done, you can save this file out and then it'll be ready whenever you need to use it for your costume and helmet designs. Now, as far as using these for your costume designs, I like to print out the three head view and then I can start drawing right on top of that and figuring out some of the nuances of my helmet designs. The ruler that's in the image will help you scale things later when you're actually building it. I'll also drop these images into my 3D modeling software, in this case, Fusion 360. I can then calibrate those images to be the appropriate scale. And then of course I can 3D model helmet or costume pieces right there. And I'll know A, they'll fit over my features on my head and B, it'll be the right size. Then of course, with that full body image that I took, I like to throw that into Photoshop and then I'll take reference images of the costume I'm going to build or a large prop that I'm going to build and I'll drop those in there as individual layers on top of my body. And then I can scale them so that they match me. And of course I can change the proportions on them so that they look more appropriate for my body size and type. 
In the case of a large prop, I'll actually scale it until it looks like it's the right size for me, and then I'll actually take the ruler in the photograph and copy and paste it to make a big long ruler in the Photoshop file, and then I'll use that to measure the length of that prop. This is kind of a kludgy solution for that, but I've been doing it for years and it works great. Of course, you can do the same thing with armor from your favorite video game. Just copy and paste pieces in there and scale them until they fit on you and then use your digital ruler to figure out how big they need to be. And there you go, fellow maker. A little bit of a tip for you there for designing your costumes. Hopefully you go out and get some reference pictures made of yourself and hopefully it helps you on your next big project. If you'd like to see how I scale, hand props, smaller like space guns and stuff. I have an article over on punishprops.com that shows how I like to do that, along with some free image files that'll help you along your way. And of course, if you'd like to take a deep dive into foam costume and prop making, we have the Foamsmith series. Both books are over on punishprops.com, Foamsmith 1, Foamsmith 2, costumes, props, head on over there, pick up your copy today, and you'll be off in no time building incredible foam costumes and props for the next big convention. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, they are available now in Canada and the UK on Amazon. Hey, thank you so much for joining me in the shop today. If you're working on any cool projects, I'd love to see it. Send me a picture over on Twitter, I'm at Chinbeard. If you have any questions about this particular technique, then drop it in the comments down below. I'll be able to help you out the best I can. And the rest of our prop tarts in the comments are usually really great about helping out. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Also, if this video was helpful for you and you have a costume maker or prop maker friend who would benefit from it, then do them a favor and share it with them. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks again for hanging out. We'll see you all in the next build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.